In this lesson, we will review some of the key aspects of the brachial plexus, its formation, and its branches. Let's start by looking at a simple drawing, which is of the anterior part of the right shoulder area. And we will take a view that is a little bit more superior in order to understand the exact relationships of the brachial plexus. Let's also remove the clavicle in order to give us a clear view of this region. Now the brachial plexus is a plexus like any other in the body where nerves that are coming out from the spinal cord, called spinal nerves, unite, divide, reunite, subdivide in order to form the peripheral nerves. One of the main reasons why this happens is that axons from multiple spinal levels can end up in a specific peripheral nerve. This allows for innervation that is quite complex and allows for complex movements to take place. The brachial plexus itself can be best understood as a tree, and it has various sections. In order to understand these, let's put these in place, starting with roots, then trunks, divisions, and finally cords. And the cords give out most of the branches. There are some branches that occur from and emanate from the, uh, from the trunks and the roots, but for all practical purposes, they come from primarily from the cords. Now, there are typically five roots that participate in the formation of the brachial plexus. These are see seen here as the C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. These five roots unite in a very specific pattern to result in the formation of three trunks. The C5 and C6 roots unite to form the upper trunk. The C7 root continues on its own to form the middle trunk. And the C8 and T1 roots unite to form the lower trunk. So thus, from five roots, we end up with three trunks. Now, each of these trunks divides into two divisions, an anterior division and a posterior division. And thus, we have six divisions, two from the upper, an anterior and a posterior, two from the middle, an anterior and a posterior, and two from the lower trunk, an anterior and a posterior. The posterior divisions are shown here in a slightly darker shade in order to visually make it easy. The three posterior divisions then further unite to form what is called as the posterior cord. The two anterior divisions, the one from the upper and the one from the middle trunks, unite to form the lateral cord, sometimes also called the anterolateral cord, but lateral cord is quite popularly used. And the anterior division from the lower trunk continues as the medial cord, sometimes called the anteromedial cord. These three cords, the lateral, posterior, and medial, sit in the axilla, and their names suggest the relationship they have to the axillary artery. So the lateral cord is lateral to the axillary artery, the posterior cord is posterior to the axillary artery, and the medial cord is medial to the axillary artery. From these cords, we have important branches. There are many branches from the brachial plexus, and I will not review all of them. I will only review a few that have the greatest degree of clinical significance. The lateral cord gives a very important nerve, a branch known as the musculocutaneous nerve. The medial cord gives a very important nerve known as the ulnar nerve. And both of these cords, the lateral and medial, provide a contribution that unites, these two contributions from each of these cords unites, to form another nerve known as the median nerve. Note that it ends with an N, a little different from the medial cord. This is a branch known as the median nerve. It's a branch from the lateral and medial cords. The three branches, these three nerves that we have seen, the musculocutaneous and the median and the ulnar, essentially all come from anterior divisions. And it's an important concept to keep in mind that branches that come from the anterior divisions will primarily supply muscles on the anterior side of the upper limb. Let's focus now on the posterior cord, 
and we have three important branches that we will review from the posterior cord. The first one of these is known as the thoracodorsal nerve, and it's seen here. Another branch from the posterior cord is known as the axillary nerve, and it is seen here. The third and important final branch is known as the radial nerve and is seen here. These three branches, the axillary, radial, and thoracodorsal nerves, all come from the posterior cord, which ultimately is formed by the posterior divisions. And the same logic extends here as well. These three nerves from the posterior cord supply muscles that are on the posterior side of the upper limb. So these are some of the key branches from the brachial plexus from the cords. There's one other branch which is coming from directly from the roots, and it comes from the C5, C6, and C7 roots, and is known as the long thoracic nerve. So these are some of the branches that have great clinical significance, and these come from the parts of the brachial plexus as I have reviewed.